Hello everyone. My name is Zhi Yi Huang and I'm from the University of Hong Kong. I'm here to present my joint work with Xin Kai Shu and Shu Yi Yan, The Power of Multiple Choices in Online Stochastic Matching to be presented in Stock 2022. Let me start by introducing this model called Online Stochastic Matching introduced by Feldman, Meta, Miracle, and Mutu in 2009, which is a generalization of a classic model called Online Bipartite Matching by Karp, Vasirani, and Vasirani. In this problem, we're given a bipartite type graph where the left-hand side denoted as U are the offline vertices and the right-hand side denoted as V are the online vertex types. We also have a bunch of edges connecting the offline vertices and the online vertex types. This type graph is known to the algorithm right from the beginning. However, each type of online vertices is going to be realized by a Poisson process with time horizon between 0 and 1. And for simplicity in this talk, we're going to assume that the arrival rate of each online vertex type is simply 1, but in the paper, we do consider general arrival rates. When an online vertex arrives, the online algorithm needs to immediately decide how to match this online vertex. Just like in the online bipartite matching problem, we can consider different objectives. For example, we can try to maximize the number of edges in the matching, which is the unweighted case. Uh, this more general case, for example, the offline vertices have positive weights and we would like to maximize the total weight of the matched offline vertices, or even the edges have weights and we would like to maximize the total weight of the matched edges. Let's see how this works with a simple example. Here we have five offline vertices and five online types denoted by different shapes. When we actually run the algorithm, the online vertices are going to be realized between time 0 to time 1 by the Poisson process. At some point, for example, a triangle vertex arrives, and by the type graph, we know that its neighbors are the top three vertices on the left. The online algorithm needs to immediately pick one of them to match this triangle vertex, and let's say we pick the topmost. Sometime in the future, another vertex arrives, its type is a pentagon, and according to the type graph, its neighbors are the top and the bottom vertex on the left. And the top vertex is already taken, and therefore the online vertex has no choice but to match it to the bottom vertex. And this process can go on, and at some point, maybe the same type of online vertices is going to arrive multiple times. For example, I have another triangle, its neighborhood is going to be completely identical to the first triangle vertex. And this time, let's say we match it to the uh, third vertex on the left. Now in this process, we can see that some type of online vertices may arrive multiple times and some types may not arrive at all. For example, uh, the circle type does not arrive. And this is because this is a Poisson process. In some sense, online stochastic matching is actually easy, and that is because we are given a complete description of how the online vertices will be generated, and therefore we know all the future possibilities and how likely each one will actually happen. And in that sense, we just need to be like Dr. Strange. We need to consider all the 40 million possibilities and find a plan that will allow us to gather all the vanity stone and solve the problem with a single finger snap called backward induction. There's one problem though. We do not just have 40 million possibilities, but actually exponential many of them. To see this, in this backward induction, the state that we need to maintain is the subset of unmatched offline vertices that will be available for future online vertices. And if there are n offline vertices, there will be 2 to the n possibilities. Even superheroes cannot handle exponential amount of computation. That is why in the literature of online stochastic matching, the algorithms usually exploit the stochastic information by solving a LP relaxation to obtain a fractional matching between offline vertices and online types, and then they design some rounding algorithm that will allow us to utilize this fractional matching in the online process. The simplest algorithm that demonstrates this idea is the suggested matching algorithm by Feldman et al. in the original paper, which they use as a warm-up. What this algorithm does is it first solves the optimal matching in the type graph. And then in the online process, whenever an online vertex arrives, I'm going to first check what its type get matched to in the type graph and try to do the same. If that offline vertex is already taken, which will be the case for the second and third appearances of the same type, 
for example here the second triangle then I'm going to simply leave that online vertex unmatched. Despite being somewhat wasteful for not matching the second and third appearances of the same type, it is quite easy to show that suggest matching is actually 1 minus 1 over E competitive, which means that the expected size of the algorithm's matching is at least 1 minus 1 over E times the expected size of the optimal matching with respect to the realized random graph. To see this, for each of the offline vertex, let's say the topmost one, the probability that it actually get matched by the online algorithm is exactly the same as the probability that at least one triangle online vertex arrives. And by the basic property of pros and process, this probability is 1 minus 1 over e. So the point here is that this 1 minus 1 over e probability bound applies to every single offline vertex, and by aggregating it over all offline vertices, we get the competitive ratio. The idea to improve over suggested matching is quite natural. Instead of having just one matching from the type graph, what if we can get two meaningful matchings such that each online type is matched to different offline vertices in these two matchings? If we can find such matchings, then we get a second chance. In the second appearance of the same type, instead of using the first matching, let's try to use the second matching, and that will give us some competitive edge over the suggested matching and break the 1 minus 1 over E barrier. And this is exactly what the literature has been doing up to this point, and it is known as the power of two choices, with two exceptions that partially exploit the power of three choices, but still, it is quite natural to ask can we exploit the power of multiple choices? That is exactly the main conceptual contribution of this paper. We develop new ideas and techniques that will allow us to utilize the power of multiple choices in online stochastic matching. First, we build on the existing LP relaxation of this problem and introduce a new hierarchy called Poisson LP hierarchy, which will allow us to get better and better information about the stochastic model and what the online matching algorithm can do. And then based on that, we developed two algorithms that utilize multiple choices. The first one is called top half sampling, which allows us to break the 1 minus 1 over E barrier for the first time uh, for edge weighted matching with free disposal with uh, general arrival rates. And the second algorithm is called Poisson Online Correlative Selection, which adapts a recent technique called online correlative selection into the um, online stochastic model and that allow us to improve the competitive ratio for the unweighted and vertex-weighted matching. For the interest of time, we're going to only briefly sketch the LP relaxation and top-half sampling, and for Poisson online correlative selection and much of the technical detail, I'm going to refer you to the paper. All right, let's spend the next few minutes to talk about LP relaxations of online stochastic matching. The simplest thing that we can try is the matching LP on the type graph, which corresponds to finding the optimal matching on the type graph. It turns out that is too loose. To see this, let's consider an example whose type graph is one perfect matching and nothing more. If we solve the matching LP, it finds the perfect matching without any problem. The only algorithm, however, has to handle a random graph in which each online type only shows up with probability 1 minus 1 over e by basic property of the Poisson process. And when an online type face fails to show up, the corresponding offline vertex has to stay unmatched. What this means is that multiple copies of the same online type cannot be matched to the same offline vertex, and combining with the property of Poisson arrival, it means that each type edge in the type graph should not be allowed to match to more than 1 minus 1 over e. The natural way to take that into account is to cap the LP variable xuv for each xuv by 1 minus 1 over e instead of 1 in the matching LP. But we just we didn't just stop there. Uh, in this paper from last year by myself and one of my co-authors, Xin Kai, we introduced the natural Poisson LP that looks like the following. So we have uh, LP variable xuv for each edge uv that correspond to the match probability of this edge. And in the unweighted case, we just want to maximize the sum of these variables. And then for each online type, we have the usual matching constraint, 
uh, summing over all the offline neighbors, x u v sum to m most one, and this is because each online vertex can get matched only once, and the on arrival rate of each online type is also one. For each offline vertex u, though, we don't just have the usual matching constraint, which will be sum over x u v less than or equal to one. Instead, we consider any subset t of the online types. And we write this inequality, which says that the probability that u is matched to one of the online vertices with types in T cannot exceed the probability that there is at least one online vertex with type in T at all. So the right hand side is exactly that probability according to the Poisson property. In this paper, we take it one step further. In the natural Poisson LP from the previous slide, uh, we consider the probability that each offline vertex is matched to one of the online vertices whose types uh, falls into some subset T. In this paper, we consider the Poisson LP hierarchy, which allows the left hand side, the offline vertices, to be a subset 2. Uh, we call this subset S, and we consider what is the number of matches that could happen between offline vertices in S and online vertices with the types in some subset T. And it doesn't matter what the structure looks like, this number of matches cannot exceed the number of vertices in S and cannot exceed the number of realized vertices with types in T, whichever is smaller. And that's exactly what this inequality is saying, the left hand side summing over x u v for the u in S and t in, uh, v in T is the number of matches that happen between S and T, and the right hand side is the stated uh, expectation calculated according to the Poisson property. Um, if I allow S to be arbitrarily large, then there will be simply too many constraints, too complicated to be solved in polynomial time. But what we show here is that if we restrict our attention to uh, the subset S whose size does not exceed some constant L, then this LP emits a separation oracle and can still be solved within polynomial time. But why are these uh, seemingly very complicated constraints from the natural Poisson LP be of any use though? Well, intuitively, what these constraints do is that it forces the LP to match each online type fractionally to multiple offline vertices and that allows us to get some meaningful information as what are the second, third, and fourth options that we need to try in case the offline vertices as the first option is already matched, already taken. And technically, these constraints allow us to apply Jensen inequality in the wrong direction. So let's consider all the edges uv associated with some fixed offline vertex u. And by the natural uh, matching constraint, these x u v sum to at most one. And consider any convex function f. Jensen's inequality will tell us that the sum of f of x u v is minimized when the total mass of one is evenly distributed across these variables x u v. The flip side of that is that this sum is maximized when we try to concentrate the total mass of one to the same variable x u v. But the natural Poisson LB constraint says that the largest x u v cannot exceed one minus one over e, and the largest two combined cannot exceed one minus one over e squared. So subject to the largest one being one minus one over e, the second largest cannot exceed one over e minus one over e squared, and so on and so forth. And this will allow us to give an upper bound to the sum of f of x u v for all the edges u v associated with the same offline vertex u. And for general arrival rate, we can similarly derive a converse Jensen inequality um, that has this uh, integral as the upper bound. And there are some useful, useful special cases, and in particular, it just turns out that this function, which is the larger of 2x minus 1 and 0, uh, is of particular importance in uh, the analysis of top half sampling. And it will tell us that the total amount that exceeds half the um, arrival rate cannot exceed 1 minus ln 2. 
Okay, so this is the converse Jensen inequality derived according to the natural Poisson LP from the uh, paper uh, last year. And in this paper, we derive a similar converse Jensen inequality for the level two uh, Poisson LP in the LP hierarchy. But that level two L, uh, inequality is actually quite loose and I really I'm begging you to take a look and try to improve it because uh, quite likely that will allow us to directly improve the compatible ratio of online stochastic matching and likely in some other online uh, stochastic opt optimization problems too. All right, now I will spend the last five minutes to talk about top half sampling. I will explain top half sampling as blending two simpler algorithms, greedy and sampling, which on its own is at best one minus one of three competitive, yet by blending them, we break this barrier. We will consider the edge weighted problem in the free disposal model, which means that each offline vertex can be matched multiple times, but only the heaviest edge contribute to the objective. This model is motivated by online advertising because each advertiser is actually happy to have its ad shown multiple times as long as we only charge for the most valuable display. So on the top left, I write the current max weight match to each offline vertex in red. And I also write the current edge weight of the current online vertex in blue. And in the bottom left, uh, I have the type graph and the corresponding fractional matching solved in the LP. One way to do it is to use a greedy approach by comparing the current max weight and the edge weight, we can get the marginal of the uh, of each edge. And the greedy algorithm will simply match the online vertex to the neighbor that offers the largest marginal. This approach completely ignore the potential uh, opportunity cost analysis. For example, even though the blue offline vertex offers the largest marginal three, Maybe from the type graph, we will see that there are many other types who will have even larger edge weights with this blue vertex and therefore matching to it right now is actually wasteful. On the other hand, even though the yellow vertex offers only marginal of one, but maybe the square type is the only type that has any positive weight with this yellow vertex at all, and therefore it is actually beneficial to grab this chance right now. Now on the other hand, we can just follow the advice of the type graph and hope that that implicitly captures the opportunity cost analysis that I just described. So more precisely, we can consider a interval between one and zero. And then we simply put sub intervals on this uh, unit interval according to the fractional match. So for example, the blue uh, vertex has fractional match of 0.2 and therefore I assign zero to 0.2 to the blue uh, vertex. And after that, I simply sample a random number between zero and one, and then match the online vertex to whichever offline neighbor whose interval contains my sample. The problem with this sampling approach is that it completely ignores the marginal. And in this case, it turns out we sample someone that offers zero marginal, which is completely suboptimal. Now, how do we blend it? In top half sampling, instead of just aligning these uh, offline vertices and their subintervals between 0 and 1 by the alphabetical order, we're going to align them sorted by their marginal. And on top of that, we are only going to sample a number between 0 and 1 half, meaning that we're only sampling from the more valuable half uh, according to the marginal. And that's it. That's why we call top half sampling. And this simple change allows us to improve the compatible ratio from 1 minus 1 over E to 0 0.706. Well, obviously, I won't have time to talk about all our analysis, but I do want to make uh, remarks on two interesting highlights. So um, the first one is in terms of the analysis framework. All the existing works in the literature of online uh, stochastic matching basically try to analyze the match probability on a vertex by vertex basis. More precisely, for each offline vertex, the existing analysis would try to show that the probability that the online algorithm actually matches this vertex is at least the desired competitive ratio times how likely the LP matches this vertex. While this is a natural way to go, 
but this is a very strong requirement and create a lot of uh, technical difficulties. By contrast, our analysis of the top half sampling algorithm directly analyze the overall match quality uh, by a differential inequality. So more precisely, we're going to consider this uh, notation, uh, a bar of t, which is the current uh, difference between the optimal objective and the algorithm's objective. So how much the algorithm is lagging behind compared to the optimal objective. So clearly, initially, the algorithm gap, the lag is exactly just optimal. And furthermore, the marginal match rate can be shown to be at least optimal and therefore uh, a, a bar decreases by speed at least minus OPT. And on top of that, we show the following differential inequality. Well, for the purpose of this talk, the coefficients are not very important, but it has the form that some linear combination of a bar and its first and second order derivatives is actually less than or equal to zero. So taking the intuitive meaning of a bar and its first and second order derivatives into account, what this inequality says is that the larger the current gap is comparing to the optimal and the faster the match rate drops due to the matches that's happening uh, at this very moment, the larger the local match rate is going to get. And it's only a basic exercise to solve this differential inequality and what I wrote here is going to satisfy the boundary condition as well as the differential inequality with equality. Um, the other interesting highlight that I would like to mention is a reduction that will allow us to directly apply the competitive ratio that we proved for on the unweighted case to the vertex weighted case. So here we consider this example type graph with four different uh, vertex weight, one to four. And I would like to imagine this weighted type graph as the combination of four unweighted uh, type graph, one at each weight level. At weight level i, this graph is obtained by ignoring the offline vertices whose weight is strictly smaller than i. The point here is that once I get some fractional LP and write down this weighted objective, which is the sum of w times x u v, it can be written as the sum of these unweighted objectives with respect to the same fractional matching. Now to see this, an edge that corresponds to an offline vertex with weight 3 is going to contribute to only the first three objectives but not the fourth and therefore that xuv is going to contribute in total three times xuv. And moreover, by running top half sampling on the vertex weighted graph, we can effectively view it as simultaneously running top half sampling on each of these unweighted graph, one at each level, and as a result, at each weight level, the objective that the algorithm gets at that level is going to be at least the desired compared ratio 0 0.706 times what the XUV, the fractional matching, contribute to that level. Now, by aggregating this conclusion across the four different weight levels, we get the desired compared ratio for the vertex weighted case. Now, to summarize, this paper uh, introduced some new ideas that allow us to uh, utilize the power of multiple choices in online stochastic matching. And concretely, we introduced the Poisson LP hierarchy to get better and better fractional matching that can be used as a guide for the online decision making. And we also introduced two online algorithms that utilizes multiple choices, top half sampling, which uh, break the one minus one three barrier for the actuated problem with free disposal, and also Poisson online correlated selection, uh, which improves the compared ratio for the unweighted and vertex weighted matching uh, in the online stochastic model. Well, that's the end of this talk, and I'll be happy to answer questions at the conference or through the following email. Thank you.